Hey friends, it's so nice to see you. It's today, the time is now. You are here, and the weather is outside your window. Today's guest just finished a long run in the hit Broadway musical Come From Away, and has appeared on TV's Orange is the New Black, Gotham, The Blacklist, The Good Wife, New Amsterdam, and more. Please welcome my friend, Pearl Sun. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? It's good. It's great to see you. You too. What have you been doing on lockdown? I've been mostly parenting. I have a four and a half year old. <laughs> Both my husband and I unfortunately got COVID early on and uh, we had a pretty, pretty heavy bout of it. We were sick with it for three weeks. It's not fun. That's how it started. Things have kind of buoyed me along creatively. I've done a few readings, a few virtual concerts, auditions, obviously. Mm -hmm. I've been turning up more and more because we're starting to see the light. I've been doing a lot of dramaturgical work. Cool. And I started taking some producing classes, commercial theater producing classes. Wow. Yeah. That's so much. You're doing so much. Yeah. Did you have anything this year that hasn't happened? I was on stage with Come From Away. On Broadway. On Broadway, yes. And so, and we were just, that weekend that we shut down was going to be our three-year celebration and anniversary and party and... Well, we met in rehearsal for Philadelphia Orchestra's Bernstein's Mass. And yes. Yeah, very special production. And very special and really provided me with some of my best friends wow. and I still hold on to them is definitely one of the highlights of my career so yeah it was very very special I mean you've never stopped working like oh I don't true. know about that I don't it's know about true. that <laughs> it's <laughs> true <laughs> no you're you're always working and then I'm watching tv and you pop on on a scene and I scream and <laughs> It's like, it's amazing. And, and I'm very, I'm very fortunate. I'm very yeah. fortunate. So what happened was my parents were amateur Chinese opera singers and they grew up loving opera and uh, they were both born in mainland China, then migrated to Taiwan and then from Taiwan migrated to San Francisco and they met in San Francisco. They get married they continue their love of Chinese opera. They do so by creating their own Chinese opera club in Los Angeles. So once a week, they would meet every Saturday. They'd rent a small community rec room, drag my brother and I, I think we were, I don't know, I, I can't even remember when we didn't do it. Every Saturday from 10 or 11 in the morning until eight or nine at night, they would just get together and sing. And once a year, they would pool their resources together and produce an opera with full sets and costumes. And I got to participate. When I decided to move forward into theater as my career, my parents were terrified that I was going to starve to death. Oh. And uh, <laughs> they just were like, this is not a career. This is something you do on the side. This is oh. not a career. They kind of faulted themselves because how do you <laughs> expose me to this my entire life and then expect me not to want to do it? Right. <laughs> um, my favorite story is that my very first time on stage apparently was when I was six months old. My father was on stage performing an opera for a full audience. My mother was holding me in the wings and chatting up with somebody in the wings and just kind of set me down. And then I crawled. Apparently I crawled out there unbeknownst to her, just started crawling out there. <laughs> just crawling towards the spotlight. Just, just crawling, just yeah. crawling. <laughs> I think more toward my dad, but... Yeah, sure, fine. <laughs> to upstage your dad. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. And then you're basically on stage since that moment. So in high school, I did, you know, high school productions. I was Sandy in Greece. <gasps> I was Danny and in Greece. You were? Yeah. I mean, come on. We're, 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 we're a set. Absolutely. Clearly, like look at our outfits. <laughs> <laughs> I played the narrator in Joseph. I played the Natalie Wood role in Rebel Without a Cause. And your yeah. high school arts scene sounds pretty sophisticated. Was well, it? we had this amazing teacher who she she was just she took care of it all. Like yeah, her yeah. name was Helen Stringos. She was an incredible teacher, and she actually brought us all to New York for a high school trip. 
Wow. Uh, for a one week trip. Wow. And we were total tourists for the week. And she exposed me to my first two Broadway shows, which were uh, Cats and Miss Saigon. Wow. From there to Santa Monica City College, because I didn't know what I wanted to do. At first, I thought I was going to be a psychologist. So I took a bunch of psychology courses. And then I found the theater department. And I did a little thing here and a little thing there. And a couple of the theater teachers there decided to put up Closer Than Ever. One of the actors of the four of us, she had a connection with a small theater house called Century City Playhouse. Uh, they remodeled it and wanted to reopen it with a, a show. Wow. And they came to see our show and they said, this is perfect. It's small, it's four actors, two musicians and minimal set. This is perfect for our space. It was a 99 seat black box theater. And then we did four shows a week for a month. And that was the first time that my parents gave over. They came and watched it. They saw that people who didn't even know who I was mm. came to see the show. Mm. And they said, she might have something. And from that point forward, they were supportive all the way and saw everything that I did. And Wow. Yeah. And now you've done like 37 Broadway shows. No, I've only <laughs> done, I've done three. That's a lot. And then I did a, a Broadway show that was on tour. So I did the first national tour of Next to Normal, which yeah. was thrilling for me. So yeah. Can I ask you some questions? Yes. Where are you now? New York City. Zodiac sign. Sagittarius. First show you ever did. In school, Cinderella. I was in the ensemble and I have a photograph of me looking so nastily at the little girl playing Cinderella. <laughs> I wanted to play Cinderella. I have the stinkiest face on, stinkiest, staring at the little blonde girl playing Cinderella. Favorite work of art? Metamorphosis. Favorite musical? The Light in the Piazza. First opera you ever saw? I had a friend whose parents had season tickets in LA and he took me a lot. There was Barbara of Seville, there was The Magic Flute, and there was Ariadne of Noxus. Wow. All of them were amazing. Do you believe in past lives? I believe in the afterlife. So I guess if I believe in the afterlife, I, I should believe in the, in past lives as well. Yeah. Who do you think you were in a past life if you had one? I was probably a nurse. Coffee or tea? Tea. Favorite color? Green. Favorite food? Turkish. Best vacation ever? Bali. The food, the people, the cultural experiences. It was beautiful. Beach or mountains? Beach. It's the red carpet of a film you're starring in. Who are you wearing? I kind of want a Zach Posen. Mmm. Or a Christian Sariana. Or both. An entrance look and then an onstage look. Yes. For when yes. I'm presenting or yes. receiving or whatever. All of it. Presenting <laughs> and receiving. <laughs> Your favorite 16 bar audition cut. Bonnie Raitt's I Can't Make You Love Me. Oh, I love that. Best sick day excuse. I'm feeling nauseous. I'm feeling really nauseous. Uh huh. <laughs> okay, you can have a weekend away with anyone. I want Maya Angelou. She's passed away, alive than Oprah. Okay, you're not in showbiz. What's your backup dream job? I'd love to be an architect. Do you believe in ghosts? Yes. Pitch me a new musical or opera. I want joy. I want compassion. I want light. I want different people, different ages and sizes and races, where they all share their their differences. Mm, you can go to any planet. Jupiter. But you can live in any time period. The 60s, because so much was happening politically for change. You can spend a year living as another person. Kamala Harris. You can go back in time to any time in your life and tell your younger self one thing. Don't listen to what they say. You have a lot to offer you're gonna make change. What's the meaning of life? Try to find ways to enjoy. Try to find ways to love. Try to find ways to know people, get to know people. Be a, a, a sponge for learning. Yes. Right, that's why we're here, I mean. Yeah, for sure. What else are we doing? What's the high note of your life? <sighs> <laughs> What's the low note of your life? <laughs> That's a wrap. <laughs> That's all for today's episode. Wasn't that fun? See you next time. Puppies and rainbows till we meet again. What do you think?
you're the puppy. Did you know that? <laughs>